I usually don't bother to post anything on Reddit, but I figured that typing the situation out might make me feel better. So I'm 23 years old, female, and I live on my own. I just moved out to the area for school, and I went to my local Walmart to gather supplies for cleaning. As I walked inside, I took note of an older man near the entrance that I briefly made eye contact with and nodded at, and I just kept walking. I had looked at folders for a bit, and I then made my way towards the electronic section at the back to go look for a charger. I was making my way through the aisles on the way down looking at all the fall decorations. A lot of them were geared towards kids, so I just glanced at them quickly and then turned around to leave. The same man as before was there. I didn't hear him walk into the aisle, and he was holding and inspecting some paper plates with childish Halloween designs on them for kids. I thought that was a little strange, but brushed it off, thinking he had grandkids. I left, and I made my way to the electronic section where they kept the chargers behind locked glass doors. I'm there for about seven to eight minutes, and the same old man shows back up. Now, at this point, I'm pretty far from where I last saw him, and I see in the reflection of the glass that he's checking out my ass as he walks by. I brushed it off because I'm used to men making quick glances like that in public, and I just left it at that. He's looking at the display behind me at the other side, goes to leave, and this is where it gets creepy. He stands right behind me, and he starts aggressively eyeing me up and down while licking his lips, paying particular attention to my backside and my legs. He's basically undressing me with his eyes. At this point, he was giving off massive creep vibes, and I started shaking with adrenaline, and I was just really afraid he was going to try and grab me. I stay calm despite my throat feeling like it had a ball in it, and I wait for him to leave. He does. I then go to a random mile nearby electronics, but in the general part of the store. I noticed that there were two men behind the electronics counter, and I wanted to stay near them just in case something went wrong. So I waited a few minutes, just standing there just to see if he showed back up. I wanted to confirm if he was following me around or not. Sure enough, five minutes later, there he was. I caught him quite literally speed walking down the main walkway and looking down each aisle as if he was frantically looking for me. He stopped dead in his tracks, saw me notice him, and then promptly scurried off. I went to the electronic section and I then informed the workers that I was indeed being followed and that I really wasn't comfortable and I asked if there was security. They tell me they don't have any, just theft prevention, and they offered to check me out there or accompany me to finish my shopping. They were very kind, and I did actually take them up on the offer to get my cleaning supplies nearby. As we turned together, the same guy was standing further away, still staring at me. He literally just increased the radius he was using to follow me, and was now watching me from the front by the registers now. I get my stuff and check out, and I then weave through all of the different clothing sections to leave from a different section than the one I originally entered in and saw him from. I didn't see him at all this whole time, and I got to my car. I promptly drove to my new place, but stopped halfway at a random neighborhood. I pulled over and pretended that was my house, just to see if anyone told me. I didn't want this guy finding out where I lived. I then drove home when I didn't see anyone. I may be overreacting, but this is a new area to me, and I've never had someone be quite that creepy and persistent in following me. I've done things on my own plenty of times, and I've never had an issue before. This all happened in the middle of the day at like 3 p.m. too. I was wearing loose clothing, and I just wanted to take a quick trip in and out. I have no idea what could have happened if I didn't notice him, or what his intentions might have been. I can't imagine that they were good. Maybe he would have followed me to my new place. Who knows? Either way, the whole encounter was just really scary. He had no clue that I saw his reflection and the nasty expression on his face. Just stay aware, guys, and watch yourselves.
so I'm a 39 year old woman, but this happened when I was 12 years old. My brother and I were in Walmart in the CD aisle, and I had bent over to tie my shoe. Well, my little brother then started laughing. He was only nine years old at the time, and when I said what, he leaned in and then quietly said that a guy was looking at my butt. I looked without being too obvious, and there was this old man with a long gray beard that had a braid down the middle of it. I punched my little brother playfully, and we started joking back and forth who was going to be his wife. Then my brother went and joined my parents, and they kind of just let me alone do my own thing. So to the beauty aisle I went, and within seconds, the same guy as before then appeared in the same aisle as me. I went to a different aisle feeling like he was following me, and there he was pretending to look at stuff, but moving closer towards me. So I went to another aisle that most guys wouldn't go to, and that was the pads and tampon aisle. Once again, this creep was pretending to look at pads and tampons. I slowly went to the next aisle, and then ran to go find my mom. I told her what happened, so she followed me there. She told me to clear my throat if I happened to see him. And sure enough, this time he got so close to me where he could almost grab me. So I started clearing my throat until I coughed, and my mom grabbed me, and we found a manager. Walmart really sucked, because the manager was acting like since the guy didn't actually do anything, they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, thanks Walmart. I really wish I could say that I never saw him again, but that's not the case. I remember this guy every time I was in the Walmart. I was always watching my back trying to look out for this guy. So anyways, let's skip ahead a bit. I ended up being at a friend's house when I was 16, and her dad's friend came over. And lo and behold, there he was. The same braid in the middle of his beard, and he then introduced himself to me as Butch. As soon as we were a veer shot, I flipped out, telling my friend that that's the same creepy Walmart guy that followed me around Walmart when I was 12. She said that she wasn't surprised, but she seemed unaffected. Yeah. Sometimes she really wasn't the greatest of friends. So one day when we're hanging out, she acted like we were going to see someone really cool and awesome. And in my little mind, I thought that they knew someone single to introduce me to. So we go knock on the door to this house, and this rather manly looking woman answered the door. She then let us in and brought us cold cokes from the fridge. And then there he was, Butch. He came strutting in the room and made me so uncomfortable that I wanted to throw up. And then things took a really disgusting turn. He started telling us how he wanted to see us naked and take pictures of us enjoying each other's body. As you can imagine, that was a very uncomfortable hour of saying hell no and being angry as hell that my friend brought us to this situation. She never brought me around him again, but years later, her mother-in-law was actually dating him and she actually allowed her kids to spend the night around this sick Yeah, my friend and her family definitely weren't the smartest, and it gets even worse. So years later, pictures were found belonging to Butch of little kids. And yes, it's exactly what you're thinking. Not innocent pictures, but very bad pictures showing what a monster Butch truly was and even her mother-in-law took some of the pictures. Very luckily, someone ratted them out, and both of them went to jail. The mother-in-law and Butch both became registered sex offenders, but she was released after six months. It didn't really surprise me, though, as much as it should have. Butch was put in prison amongst other very horrible crimes involving children. He went to prison for a very long time, and he ended up eventually dying there as well. Thank God. I sleep much easier now knowing there's one less disgusting pedophile living on this earth harming children. I was at Walmart earlier this evening with my two daughters. One is elementary school aged, while the other is in middle school. We had looked around the school supplies for about a minute, 
then rounded the corner to see the Halloween candy on display. As we turned the corner, a slightly older guy came really close to us, kind of like he was in a hurry, and he almost ran right into our cart. He didn't have a cart or any items of his own. I said excuse me, and then stopped right in front of the candy to let my youngest ask a bunch of questions about the candy pumpkins. The man stopped quickly, and he started rummaging around the candies right next to my daughter. He was listening to our conversation, and he was reacting strange when my daughter then said she wanted to take a picture of the candy. He was being really twitchy and caught my eye, and looked away very quickly. We moved on to the women's PJ section to look around for a few minutes, when I noticed the same man pass by really close. He was turning right towards the shoes with a big bag of candy cradled in his arms. My girls went across the aisle to the boys' clothing section while I finished deciding, and when I was catching up with them a couple of minutes later, that guy was winding through the boys' clothes right towards my daughter's. He had kind of paused and looked confused or lost, and he watched me discuss sizes with my youngest. This is when I started thinking that something was definitely off with this dude. I mentioned him to my older daughter, and then we moved through the partition into the girl's clothes. I didn't see him again for a few minutes, and I figured it was nothing, but then he came into that section, and he was acting like he was trying to pick out a Justice shirt. He still had that big bag of candy that he just kept adjusting his grip on. I kept seeing him take quick peeks at my girls, but then every time he saw me watching him, he just pretended to be occupied in his shopping. I told my oldest that I thought he was following us, and she said that she noticed the same thing, so I made my youngest get in the cart so I could keep a close eye on them both. The guy then walked out of the girl's section, but he looped around the partition back to the boy's section, then stopped at an opening on the other side, but still in a straight line of sight. The man caught my eye again, twitched, and then pulled out his phone, then texting someone, then walking away. By that time, I was now on high alert and possibly getting quite paranoid. I looked around and I saw two slightly older men standing around. One was in electronics kind of looking at a half-empty display of something, but I swear he glared at me several times, even though there were three or four racks of clothes, as well as a hallway with occasional people in between. The third guy had wandered into the girls' section, and he was apparently considering buying a Justice shirt too. Every time he saw me noticing him watching us, he wandered down to the baby aisles, but he just kept coming back after a couple of minutes. I realize now, looking back, that if I had really suspected something bad, I should have just gotten my girls the hell out of there. Clothes shopping for a picky preteen isn't fun, and I really wanted to get it over and done with. On top of that, I kept second-guessing myself that the two other guys were just a coincidence. I kept my girls really close, and after we moved to the women's section, I didn't see any of them again, and I stopped feeling creepily that we were being watched. Now it's the middle of the night, and I'm pretty freaked out wondering what could have happened if I didn't notice the first guy, and just continued to let my girls wander around. Should I report anything? I can't imagine anything would be done just because I noticed some guy watching my daughters in Walmart. So yeah, I'm really not sure how to proceed with all this. I don't really know if something bad was happening, or if it's just me being paranoid. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know. When I was 15 years old... I had one of the most bone-chilling and eye-opening experiences I've ever had to this day. This was almost a decade ago, and I've been smoking the devil's lettuce since before this story happened, but I'll try to remember as many details as I can. I grew up in a small crime-ridden Appalachian city, and there were a lot of dodgy characters. Growing up in that type of environment, I was usually pretty good at handling these types of people, but this time it was all out of my control. It started on a fall night in the most ridiculous place it could possibly start, at the local Walmart. My dad's sister and I were doing some midweek grocery shopping, 
and my sister and I were naturally acting crazy and making some fun of the local late night Walmart creatures, trying to make each other laugh. My sister spotted a guy down an aisle from us and pointed out that he looked like a stereotypical pedophile. And boy was she right. The guy was seriously giving lovely bones but in real life vibes. He had big glasses with thick frames and a weird thin and greasy middle part in his hair. I can't remember everything he was wearing, but I remembered his oversized tan jacket. My sister and I giggled at him, and to this day, I don't even know if he noticed, or if he even noticed us before we noticed him. The rest of the shopping trip he kept popping up in the same aisles as us, which I didn't think much about. I was with my big scary dad, and this guy was also grocery shopping. Everything else was normal for the next few days, until I woke up in the middle of the night one night. I couldn't figure out what had woken me up, but I had the overwhelming feeling of being watched. Now, my childhood home was haunted, but this felt different. It felt dirty. I couldn't go back to sleep, and I was really groggy the next day. Now, the cycle kept happening for weeks on end, and my mom kept blaming it on the amount of caffeine I would drink. Until one weekend, my parents went on a day trip to a town three or four hours away and left me all alone in the house. I was used to being home alone, and I usually relished in that feeling. But this time, it was different. I felt uncomfortable and kind of anxious, so I texted my friend who will call Mike for the story. I asked him to come pick me up so we could go smoke or hang out somewhere else. I walked out to his car and we took off, having a completely normal conversation, except Mike kept looking in his rearview mirrors. I asked him if he was okay and he said yes, it's just that this guy keeps following me and he's driving around like a maniac. When we hit a red light, I turned around to get a better look at this car just to have it pulled right beside my passenger window in a messy manic and scurry away. And what I saw chilled me to the bone and almost made me immediately break down. It was the man my sister and I joked about in the Walmart, and he was looking right at me. His jaw and teeth were totally clenched, and his eyes were empty and emotionless. As I started sobbing, he laid down his horn at us, making us jump. What the hell's going on? I remember Mike asking over and over again. But I couldn't even breathe or articulate the situation. Mike was pretty quick on his feet and without explanation, just hightailed it to our local police station. We both went inside and talked to the head officer who was actually one of our friend's dad. Mike had actually memorized the license plate number and they ended up running a report sending an officer out to look for his car. After talking to the officer, Mike had pointed out the man that had been parked across the street from my home, so they sent an officer to my house as well and called my parents. The most horrifying thing about this was what happened next. When an officer arrived in my house, he found the man in my front yard digging through the bushes right outside my bedroom window. He was arrested and after the scene had been inspected by the officers. The man had a crowbar, duct tape, zip ties, condoms, as well as a taser hidden in the bush right outside of my room. That's when my eerie feelings I'd been feeling for weeks finally made sense. My grandfather had always said that I was insanely intuitive, and this proved him right. It turns out this guy was a registered sex offender, and the state pressed charges along with my parents. Nothing in my life has ever been so traumatizing as this, but I guess the moral of the story is to always trust your gut whenever you feel something isn't right, especially if it's waking you up in the middle of the night. One night when I was 17, I was clothes shopping at Walmart. I was trying to get on a couple of pairs of jeans in the fitting room. After I tried on the first pair, I walked out of the fitting room and I walked around a little bit of the clothing department to try and break them in. So I switched back into my other pants and bought three pairs of the jeans that I tried on. I went to go check out 
and when I got to the self-checkout, there was this guy staring at me. He looked to be in his early 40s. He was tall, about 6 foot 3, skinny, had short black hair, and he had a creepy grin on his face, like a demon straight from hell. I tried not to pay attention to him, so I checked out. I then went to my car and drove home. Two hours later, at about 11.30 p.m., I had gotten a text from an unknown number. The text said, Hey, did you see me at the self-checkout at Walmart a couple hours ago? I asked who it was, and another text came in saying it was the same guy that was staring at me at the self-checkout. I then texted him back, asking, Oh, hello, where did you get my number from? He said that he saw it in my open wallet when I was in the fitting room, and he said he just wanted to say hello. As you can imagine, I was pretty creeped out by this. I was just like, uh, yeah, alright then. He said he wanted to get to know me because I seemed cool to him. He then sent me another text, saying that those jeans that I was wearing made my butt look hot, and he asked me to send him a picture of me in my underwear. I was disgusted. I told him I was a 17-year-old guy. He then said, It's alright. I'm really into people your age. Just send me one picture of you in your underwear. I told him no and that he shouldn't be flirting with a minor because I was only 17 at the time. He told me he was gay and he told me to also send him a picture of me naked and I told him he's a pervert for asking a 17-year-old dude for nude photos and photos of me in my underwear. He said that he knew where I lived, and he would come to my house and strangle me if I didn't send him any of the photos of me naked or in my underwear. I went to go show the text to my mother. She saw all of the texts, and she was furious. We then got in the car and drove to the police station to file a report. We showed them the messages, and they printed them off as evidence. They tracked the guy's phone number, and it was confirmed to be the same exact guy who gave me that devilish grin at the self-checkout at the Walmart. The police came back and told us that he was a registered sex offender and was also wanted for abduction of a nine-year-old girl. Long story short, this guy ended up getting arrested. Both me and my mom were very relieved that he was arrested, and we never did see him again after that night.